everybody, this is Mitch Blackfoot Anthony, and this is Signature Links. And we are in the middle of the Strand at Myrtle Beach. That's right, this is Broadway at the beach where all the tourists come. They have restaurants, bars, entertainment for the kids. See, they have kids right here. Hey, baby, how you doing? <laughs> She's like, what do you want from me? But anyway, we're coming down here to check out Rory Van Zack. He is the pianist that Doolin Pianos, Crocodile Rocks. And wait till you hear this guy. Wait till you see this guy. The ladies, you're really gonna love this guy. I'm telling you. But anyway, my name is Mitch Anthony, and this is Signature Licks. Hey everybody, we're back. This is Mitch Blackfoot Anthony and this is Signature Licks. And we're here at Crocodile Rocks in Broadway at the beach in Myrtle Beach with Rory John Zack. Hey, How man. you doing, Rory? Hey, pleasure, man. Hey, doing man, you look, you look great today. You as well, man. I'm, Dude, I'm, I like the shirt. Yeah, the women's going to be calling us here pretty soon. Huh? <laughs> Rory is a pianist extraordinaire. I mean, he's got talent out the yin yang without me, you know, using the, the other <laughs> yeah. word, but uh, Roy, tell us, tell us a little bit about how you, where are you from? I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, born and raised. And okay, well, how'd you get down here? Well, basically, um, I ended up in Myrtle Beach because of a really special gig here in town, um, a big live theater that runs year round called the Carolina Opry. Um, found it and ran by Calvin Gilmore. He, him and his team found me, well, let me backtrack a little bit because I've come a couple of times to Myrtle Beach, like, you know, as a kid and whatnot. I used to go to the, the Outer Banks a lot, like in North okay. Carolina. I, yeah. was, I, I basically grew up there, you know, in my summers and everything. Yeah. Um, and that's where, you know, a lot of my, my music and whatnot um, inspires me from like the beach and the Outer Banks and whatever. But I've come to Myrtle Beach a couple of times growing up. And um, when I was 15 years old, they had this competition that it was American Idol affiliated. And basically what they would do is um, they have these like auditions and that would get you right in front of the judges, like whoever it was at the time. Yeah. I think it was maybe like Simon and and some, two others, you know, right, I yeah. don't remember exactly which <laughs> judges. Um, but anyways, um, my mom and I were like on Google or just researching online, you know, like different competitions in the area. Cause like, that's when I was like in my young phase and I was like, I'm, I'm still hungry right now, but I'm really hungry. You know, back then as a kid, I was like, oh, how do I get my face out? Oh, yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, I yeah, and that. you know, you, like when you start out as a musician, you know, you, 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 you start playing on the street or you go to an open mic. And so our next thing was like, all right, competition, like talent shows, et cetera. And so yeah. anyways, we found that this American Idol audition was um, taking place at the Carolina Opry okay. in Myrtle Beach. And we found that the night before and we said, okay, let's hop in the car tomorrow morning and go down there and just let's go do it and see what happens. Um, so we get down there, I get in the competition, I get up on stage, perform, et cetera. They did not select me to go to Hollywood or whatever. And I think there's a reasoning behind that. I'm sure so, it is. There always is. It, right. So um, <laughs> about two days later, I get a call from the president of the Carolina Opry and he was like, Hey, um, Rory, how are you? And I'm like, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm sure my voice changed when I was 15. Uh, I hope it did, at least. But, uh, <laughs> he, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm good. He's like, so um, how, you know, would you be interested in coming down to the Opry to, to take a position? I was like, well, I'm only 15. And, yeah. and so he's like, all right, well, you know, give us a call back in like a year or so, a couple of years. And, and so it just kind of went from there. And um, I told my mom what happened. She was like, Rory, they called you to come down? And I was like, you know, I was oblivious. I didn't know what was going on. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so um, fast forward two years later, the, the 2017, um, I got an email from the president again. He was like, hey, we have an, an, a position opening up um, in like two months or so. Um, would you like to come down and audition? Mm -hmm. And so basically what this audition was, 
um, they sent me a, like maybe three or four songs to learn that they were already doing in the show that mm -hmm. um, one of the other leads were doing. Mm -hmm. And so the second I get there, they actually throw me in the show that night. Wow. Yeah, they, they throw me in the show and I'm like a deer in the headlights. And I think the only song I was able to learn with like a three day notice was My Girl, The Temptations. I got sunshine. Everyone knows yeah. that song. Yeah. Um, so I get, I go out there, do that song. I think I learned another one or maybe two more through that, that week um, that I was there. Cause they were like, you know, you should come down for a week and try it out mm -hmm. before we you know make a decision or, mm -hmm. and you, we want to see what you think of it. So um, I learned two or three songs and by the end of the week, they're like, yeah, man, you're, you're a good fit. And um, I was wrapping up online school then um, because I was, I, I was in regular high school until sophomore year, and I converted online because I wanted to focus on my music. Right, and right. That's a, that's a bold move. And I was going to ask you, what would you tell inspiring youngsters out there that want to become musicians, that, that, what it takes, what it, what it, what it takes. You got to have guts. Honestly, you have guts. Honestly, it, it, it's time and dedication. I mean, the, yeah. the, you know, I, I, there's this theory called the 10,000 hour rule where you just got to, you know, you got to find yourself you got to find your craft what your your um your your pros are and what your cons are i guess yeah. i mean hopefully there you know you have more pros and cons I right guess. right um but i know i spent a lot of time in my house in the basement you know i had a little music room down there and you know i was uh, we we had a piano in the house and whatnot and so i just i i was playing every day trying to learn songs trying to find my voice and and besides from time and dedication you have to go out and play live i mean that's what i tell that's where you learn that's yeah, where you absolutely learn. that's really that's where you really cut your teeth and you that's know? where people yeah. will actually tell you the truth about your plan absolutely yeah. you know because if you listen to your mom or your grandmother or anybody else they're always going to tell you how good you are of course and then when you go out you're just like oh i'm so good i'm so good and then somebody says hey kid you can't come here and play anymore. Right. Yeah. And then knock down your ego that you had, you built up in the house. And like, yeah. that's the thing, like you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta cut your teeth out live. And that's, that's why I tell every youngster yeah. out there that sends me a message or comes up to me or their mom's like, you know, oh, my kids, you know, learning how to play. And I'm like, you just gotta go out and play as many yeah. shows or appearances as you can. And, and that helps you yeah. because once you got to the Opry, it's not like you've never done it before. No, no. It, I mean, when I was young, like, about 14 or 15, I, I started my own band out of high school with, with some of the, you know, my friends that I grew up with. And we got hooked up with a big agency in Raleigh that, that had us really busy, like playing probably three, four times a week. Okay. That, that um, had us, you know, touring around the Carolinas a little bit. You know, we'd pack my, my Toyota Sequoia up with, with <laughs> a, no trailer or anything. It was like a drum kit, two, like three or four guitars, bass, you know. Yep. Um, I, yeah, I brought my keyboard then too. Um, but we, yeah, we packed that thing up and we were torn all around just because we were so hungry and wanted to get out. And oh, yeah. it, it wasn't oh, really yeah. about, you know, the money or the crowds. We just wanted to get out and play. Right. And um, right. That, 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 that was a integral part of um, who I am today and also for, for getting that gig at the Opry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You had to be, you had to be experienced uh, a, a little, you know, I mean, it's like, if you can't, it's like getting out of the tub, man. If you don't have a towel, you're just gonna sit there dripping, man. Absolutely. But if you don't know how to use one. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk to Rory a little bit about how he got this gig and what led up to it and uh, what he's planning on doing in the future. This is Mitch Anthony, and we'll be back after these messages. Welcome to Wingding. With a variety of services to offer, we are an end-to-end, one-stop shop for digital media production and distribution. Our company originated in podcasting, video production, and digital marketing space, affording us a solid background for growing your brand through media distribution. Contact us at wingdang.tv so we can do what we do for you. Glide Gear was originated during this whole digital revolution. I mean, originally Glide Gear was started, we saw that affordable videography gear was missing. 
and we wanted to do something about that. We design all of our products in the USA and manufacture overseas. It's exciting for us here at Glide Gear to see what people are doing with our products on a day-to-day -day basis. Not only do you have the novice using our gear, but you have professionals out in the field using our gear because it's affordable and it gets the job done. The video industry by definition is, is made for creative people. We're already trying to create tools that can make those people even more creative. At Glide Gear, we're trying to make it simple, easy to use, so it can be really accessible to everybody. Ultimately, we want our product in the hands of every filmmaker. We're obsessed with listening to our customers and providing a better product. Our philosophy at Glide Gear here, it's pretty simple. It's, it's a quality product, it's affordable, and you can achieve amazing results. We have built our company on quality, affordable gear with a dedication to a long-lasting customer relationship. We say it all the time around here, things are happening. Hey everybody, we're back, and I'm here at Crocodile Rocks with Rory John Zack. Yeah, man. And he's been talking to us about how he got to Myrtle Beach, how he grew up, learned all of this stuff on his own. And, and you had lessons at some point, right? I did, man, yeah. So basically, I've been playing piano since I was maybe two, three years old, okay. something like that. I, I picked up drums when I was like seven, but um, yeah, in my early childhood years, I, I picked up piano lessons mainly because my mom made me. Uh, I'll be honest, she wanted me to go do it. And, I wish know. my mom made me. Yeah, and even even through like age, like I guess I started around like six or five or six years old, mm -hmm. um, took them all the way up to I was like maybe 13, 14, 15, something like that. And, okay. you know, I had some stubborn years. Where I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this no more. But, I, you know, that's everybody has like that weird like, you know, like let's say like eighth grade probably is like one of the hard, one of like a child's hardest years to go through as right. far as like, you know, figuring it out. It is. And, you know, and um, I think musically, I, I I had some stubbornness, but I, I grew out of it. And you know, I'm I'm super thankful that I had those lessons because I'm still playing, you know, like chops and and you know certain licks and songs that I learned, you know, with my piano right. teachers. And it's muscle memory, absolutely, and which allows you to interact with the crowd. And your your fingers are still doing the motions. Mm -hmm. It's like me playing drums; I can still talk, chew gum at the same time. You know, yeah, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But or that, whatever if, that is. <laughs> everything, <yeah. laughs> if I did that, I'd probably throw up right now. But anyway, uh, we're going to talk to Rory about the Nashville trips that he took back and forth from Myrtle Beach to Nashville, doing a little tours here and there. All right, man. So basically the, the trips from Nashville to Myrtle Beach. Tell us about that. Yeah, man. So I've been back and forth to Nashville probably for the last eight years or so. Um, when I lived in Raleigh, I, my mom and I would go back and forth just to kind of see the city. She wanted to show me, oh, this is Music City. This is, this is what it's all about. Um, we would go to like CMA Fest, the big country music yeah, festival. Yeah. Um, and I got to meet a lot of artists because they were doing meet and greets and special VIP events and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I, I you know, got to meet you know, like Hunter Hayes and Keith Urban, and a lot of different people that I looked up to at the time. And, you know, I still do as, as a, you know, musicians or singers or, and entertainers. Um, so, you know, I guess that's, I started going when I was 14, 13, 14 years old. Um, I'm still back and forth a lot, but when I got the, the, the gig at the Opry, that restricted my time a lot because Carolina Opry, that's a, Man, as far as taking up your time, that it, it, it runs year round, six nights a week. Absolutely. Um, but I had no problem with I that. Heard, I heard Kevin Hughes is a hard ass. No. <laughs> I'm no. just kidding. That was a jab at Kevin. He knows me. I, I'm just joking, Kevin. But go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, Ke Kevin's a monster, man. He, he, if you guys have no idea who Kevin Hughes is, you got to look him up or go see him when he plays Absolutely. out live or even at the Carolina Opera. He's the musical director. Um, Fantastic, incredible bass player, great singer too. Yes, his and, son uh, as well. Yeah, absolutely, Tyler. Yeah. Tyler, and, 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 and he and I are the same age, and he still looks good. 
He still looks good. Oh, Kevin, yeah, man, yeah, you, yeah. You, look, you look great too. Hey, man, that's why about? me and Kevin like to play with each other because <laughs> oh, on, on, on the stage. Oh, like there we go. Oh, on the stage. <laughs> because because we look good for our age, man. We be pulling people in wheelchairs and crutches and stuff. On there, you know, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's all good. But tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, Crocodile Rocks. Definitely. So um, I, when I was um, exiting the Opry, um, I met one of the owners of. of Croc Rocks out at some engagement party, I, I think it was for Tyler, believe it or not, at Kevin Hughes' son. Yeah. And um, he was like, man, he'd be so good at Crocodile Rocks, et cetera. And, um, you know, COVID was going on still. And so I was kind of, you know, weary about it. And, and I never really knew about this place, even though it was like 15 minutes from my house. Mm. Um, the main reason was I couldn't get in, I was underage. Right, and, right, right. And, you know, I, I've walked by, you know, outside on the sidewalk here many times, and I'm like, oh, what's going on in there? I just knew there was a bunch of noise coming out the doors and <laughs> two people playing piano. I really had no idea what the show was about. So um, I meet one of the owners. He, he brings me in a couple times to see the show, et cetera. And that really um, that lit a fire in me because it was like, man, this is, like, really cool. It's something different. It's a specialty show, um, a specialty act. And... The, the really cool thing about this show every night, this place is open um, during the season every night. And then I think it, it, we close down some days like for winter and stuff like that. But this show, man, you're doing something different every single night. And also it's player's discretion too, in a sense, unless- You have some freedom. Absolutely, yeah. Now it is an all request show. And what that means is that you have to write down your song. Actually, I got the slips right here. Okay. Um, so what you do is you, you write your song down the artist and you can write a comment if you want um and how this works is like we it's we call it an official request where you have to put a love offering with it okay and the highest um bid gets their song played first like it's like buying a disney fast pass okay so if if you request like you know like twenty dollars yes. or hundred dollars that's a brilliant way to ask for tips absolutely absolutely and <laughs> you know it's something i never heard of until i i've found this place and, yeah. and landed in my lap but um you know you, you put a, you put a love offering you put your song title and then you throw it up on stage on one of the shelves up there on okay. one of the pianos and you know we have to to an extent we have to play all the requests now if it's something we don't know sorry we can't do it you have store credit see like we're kind of like we're, we're kind of like two different we're like toys R Us, where you can you can return something, but you, you, you have to exchange it. Like, we, we can't give you a refund. Right, right, I got you. you know, we'll, I got you. We'll, we'll fulfill your request for, like, another song or yeah. product. And, McDonald's is like that, too. Yeah. They don't want to give you money back. And then, and then <laughs> exactly, yeah, it, it, absolutely. And as, you know, the quote-unquote retailer, we're like eBay. We really don't know where these songs come from in our head because we know so many. And right. It's like, it's like right. we're like Amazon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're, sometimes we're you don't, box. sometimes you know so many songs and you learned them so long ago that you you think you don't know it when somebody, I mean, when I'm playing drums and somebody says, we're gonna play this and that, I'm like, what? How does that go? <laughs> and then they start the the head of the song and I'm like, oh, okay. That yeah, one. there it is. And then, yeah. it's, then it's there. Exactly, you know? exactly. But that could be that I know so many songs or it could be because I'm getting old. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what, when we come back, Rory's gonna show us some of those songs and some originals. You're working on some singles, right? I am, I am. Um, I'm a Nashville recording artist. I've been doing that for about four or five years now. And last year I went all into my solo project and I'm working on an album right now, more songs. And, okay. and so I'm a songwriter too. So I, I, I co-write all of my, my original music. Where can, where can the fans uh, check you out? Spotify, Spotify. iTunes, YouTube, wh wherever you get your music, I'm everywhere. And, Rory um, John Zach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I got like about, as of right now, four songs out. I'm working on a lot more that are going to be released later this year and into next year. And um, yeah, go check it out. And yeah. All right. <laughs> when we come back, Rory's going to show us what he's got on Signature Mix. Hey, man, I'm on my way to the finest place for everyone to play. Where the drinks are cool and the sun is hot and the Merosilis Marsh Walk. Enjoy spectacular waterfront dining and live music with breathtaking saltwater marsh views at the Merle's Inlet Marsh Walk. Marsh Walk, where the view, the music, and the fun are always free. Marsh Walk, Highway 17 Business, Waterfront, Merle's Inlet.
What's up, guys? This is Rory John Zach. We're here on Signature Lace. This is one of my original songs called She Gets My Drink. Hope y'all love that.